<laughs> Episode 157 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Happy New Year, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of the Interpretation Station, Happy New Year to you all. I hope you are doing well this fine day in uh, January the 2nd, 2023. I wish you and your families all very happier. Hopefully this year... We'll see if it's any better than the last few years. This decade has certainly got on off to a, a cracking start, right? 2020, 2021, 2022. Is 2023, is that going to be the, um, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse? Oh, we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, while well, you are out on December the 31st, living it up, cavorting, painting the town red, um, me, well, uh, sad old me, the interpretation station was at home preparing... Uh, for the Interpretation Station Sunday at 6 workshop that we held yesterday on January the 1st. Yes, some brave souls were actually able to uh, drag themselves out of the bed, hook themselves up onto the worldwide interweb, and participate in yesterday's unforgettable Sunday at 6 session. And luckily for you, if you're one of those people who were thinking about coming, but in the end, you just couldn't be asked. You just felt a bit too hungover. Well, you're lucky because you will be able to see the full footage, the full material uh, here on the interpretation station. How, now, the one difference with what we're doing today is that so far, up to now when I've done Sunday at Six workshops, I've just basically comp- put all the, all, the whole uh, workshop into one episode. However, this time around... Because we did something relatively new, something that we haven't really touched on in the past, I'm talking about the, this is material from the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. The statements that I found were so full and of useful material that I thought it would be better, instead of making just the one episode with covering all three languages, French, Spanish, and English, to actually split it up into three different episodes. So if you're coming here hoping to see the French and what we did from Switzerland and Russia, you'll have to wait till later in the week once I get around to producing those. So this episode is going to purely focus on the first statement that we looked at yesterday, uh, which was Chile. Okay, and so the way I'm going to do it is I'll show you the footage from the, uh, the workshop for about the first half hour. And so we got through maybe a third of the Chilean statement. And then it's going to come back to me. I'll, I'll just do, I will do a solo run through of uh, the remainder of the statement, really to cover everything that, that is in there. Because as I say, there's a lot of useful, there's a lot of useful vocab in it. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do, okay? Now, uh, as usual, I'll be putting the links to the transcripts and to the recording, to the original um, audio in the description box below. So this... The three statements that we did in yesterday's workshop, Chile, Switzerland, and um, Russia, they were all taken from the same, I think, the same session of of, of the general, it was the general conference, the IAEA general conference that was held just in September, so in in Vienna. Um, So I advise you to go and uh, go and Give the actual statements a try live, and then come and watch the uh, come and watch the episode to get my uh, breakdown of what uh, well what the Chileans said. And so before we start, so remember to please like, share, and subscribe, and please do comment if you find anything useful. If you like any of the uh, solutions I offer, if you don't like some of the solutions I offer, if you have solutions of your own to offer, please do put them in the comments because it's good for my algorithms, as they say, apparently. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, so what you're going to see now is the footage of the first sort of 40 minutes from the um, from the from the workshop, and then it's going to revert back to me. And do make sure you stick around because we have a very useful, interesting conversation towards the end of the Chilean statement about the difference between biosecurity uh, so between nuclear security and nuclear safety. And I reached. I have done a bit of extra studying today, and I've reached some conclusions that you will find hopefully uh, interesting. But anyway. Just, I'll let you go and watch the uh, the 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 footage, the action from the uh, from the workshop, and I'll see you back on the other side to finish the statement. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so let's get started at six o'clock. So welcome to Sunday at six interpretation station. Quite a few new new faces here. Um, so same drill as usual. We're going to be going through the. Uh, Three texts, one from Spanish, one from French, one from Russian. 
And so feel free to, uh, all of you are welcome to chip in. I'll be asking for people to, um, oh, we've got some real, some, some young talent joining us. <laughs> feel free. She, oh, she's good. She's good this one, I tell you. She's got real potential, real potential. Hello, Carola. Carola. Hey, how are you? Very well, thank you. I'm sorry, Welcome. I wasn't able to mute myself yet. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. So we're just getting started now. So everyone can see the screen that I've shared. So we're going to start with uh, Chile. So I was going to say, so everyone can feel either free to take part or to just observe if you don't feel so confident. It's entirely up to you. Uh, who have you, is there anyone here taking the English booth exam, the freelance? None. I will none. be. Oh, who, is that you, Carola? Uh, that's me, Elsa, and Hannah's oh, Elsa, just one Elsa. of us. Elsa, Elsa. Oh, okay, <laughs> Elsa. So, if you're the only one, I'll, I'll probably give you a bit of priority. So, and then, uh, who was it that was Maimuna? You're also thinking the French one, right? Yeah. Uh, just to say, I I thought I joined for the preamble, but I speak no Spanish at all, so I'll sit this one out until. until oh, you French don't do Spanish. You're doing French and Russian. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that would be a bit unfair, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let anybody just so anybody anyone would like would anyone like to volunteer to start. I mean, I can volunteer, but I am not taking the exam, so. That's okay. Who, who is speaking there? Is that Carola or, or Melissa? I think yes, was... that was me, Carola. Carola, well, why, why don't you start? That's fine. It doesn't matter. You just, uh, we'll go anyway. Okay. And, I haven't uh... even had a chance to read over it. but I'll, Oh, you've I'll not? Just... Well, we'll just, we'll just do your best. So yeah. remember, <laughs> as we're going through this, we're pretending, we're, it's basically, we're, we're, as though we're interpreting, okay? So we're not translating, you, you can't really jump forward too much. You want to imagine, you put yourself in the shoes, you're in the interpreting booth, and these are the words that are coming you, and you're trying to really sort of process them as they're coming along. So, uh, okay, Carola. I'll get started go. then. Right. So this Mr. is, by the way, let me just say, this is at the 66th General Conference of the IAEA, I should point this out, which takes place in Vienna. So at this, I, I was just recently in Vienna on loan, as they say, for three days. And so the, the IAEA, IAEA is based in the same building as UNOV, UN organ, in Vienna. And so I thought, well, you, you, there's a good chance you will, you will get material from Vienna uh, in the exam. And so one thing, just before we even start, is to note what the name of this organization is in Spanish. Uh, Organismo Internacional de Energia Atomica. Okay, so they say Organismo, they don't say Agencia. So that that's a very important thing to, to be aware of right from the off. Okay, Carola, so off you go. And Mr. could everyone President. who's not speaking just mute their microphones, please? Hello to Diana. So everyone who's not speaking, just to mute, please. Okay, Mr. Okay. President. In especially complex times for the international community, Chile would write to reiterate their full commitment regarding multilateralism, disarmament, and the non-proliferation of, non of nuclear weapons and a peaceful solution of controversies. Okay, Chile... that was, hang on, just give me one second. Uh, that was all pretty good. The one thing I would say, I mean, these things are always a package, right? Multilateralism, disarmament, non-proliferation. Uh, Solución pacífica de las controversias. It's important to get that wording neat done neatly. So this is actually wording from the charter. Um, and we say it's peaceful dispute settlement, peaceful dispute resolution. Okay. Peaceful resolution of disputes. In the UN charter itself, can anyone tell me this is my sort of bonus bonus point if you were to if I was to hear you say this in the uh if I was invigilating in the exam and I heard you say what is it actually called in the UN charter itself can anyone tell me solución pacífica de las controversias it's actually in the charter it's that resolution peaceful resolution of conflicts it's Conflict. not actually that it's not the resolution word that's the, the funny one it's the pacifica it's actually pacific dispute Res settlement or Pacific dispute resolution. The, in the charter, the actual language is Pacific. Okay, remember it was written back in the 1940s. Um, so if you really want to impress the examiner, Elsa, if another, <laughs> um, for example, that that you could really you could say Pacific dispute settlement, but also pe peaceful dispute, dispute resolution is the the regular thing to say as well. Uh, okay, carry on, um, carry on, Carola. 
to the next China sentence. China recognizes the relevant role the IEIA plays in promoting and facilitating research development and practical application of or practical use of atomic energy with peaceful goals, as well as regarding nuclear physical protection according to the agency's statutes, as well as its work in areas in the healthcare, agricultural and food industry areas uh, along the lines of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, that sounded pretty good. A couple of things I would just point out. Let me see if I've just got my pen here that I can annotate with. Okay. So Chile recognizes recognizes the relevance, the role of the the of the IAEA, um, of the agency. Maybe remember you don't want to be saying this whole thing. You're going to be saying this a lot, you know. So you can sort of do short, you know, use your acronym when you can. Uh, fomento y facilitación. Uh, you said promotion for fomento. For fomento, one thing that always a word always springs to mind for me is fostering. Okay, uh, just because of the FO, that's one of those little things that I have, you know, in my head for they make my life easier. So I'll often use for say foster, but promotion is also fine. Pro, uh, fostering, facilitating, uh, investigation, research, development. You said the application, practical, the practical use. Yeah, the practical. I was thinking you could say use or application, probably of piece of atomic energy for peaceful purposes, as well as in terms of um, physical nuclear protection. Yet, según el estado, in line with the agency's statute, uh, as well as work in fields like healthcare, agriculture. Like, yeah, just food. Not necessarily. Don't don't add words when you don't have to. Okay. Um, because I noticed you said industry, uh, in line with the 20... Because agenda. food itself sounds so dry. Yeah, but let's not put words into the speaker's mouth. So, you know, when you don't have to, I mean, just keep it simple. Keep it simple. I, that's what I would say. I mean, I would just, just I would just say food and, the, you know, the area of food, health, you know. We're not there to make the statements glitzy. We're just there to... Uh, to, to 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 replicate to to interpret the words. So um, just just I would I would myself would just stick to food um, in lines with the goals or in line with the goals of the 2030 agenda. I, you know what? If they were going very quickly, I might even just drop sustainable development. Everyone should know what agenda 2030 is. It's better to get it in right sustainable development. But it's one of those things that if you're in a, if you're really struggling, falling behind, you say agenda 2030, and you sort of you assume that people know what you're talking about. Okay, so that was good. Uh, let's try someone else then. Uh, anyone else would like to have a go? El Elena, perhaps? Is, are you a, are you got Spanish C, Elena? Yes, yes, I could try. I, 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 my Spanish is quite rusty, but anyway. Chile adheres to the principle of the indivisibility of the international security, while all the states without, um, irrespective of their size or power, or I suppose status, uh, have the responsibility to contribute uh, to the consolidation of the international order based in multilateralism, cooperation uh, and, uh, multilateralism, cooperation and regulation of regular regulated by regulated by the international right uh, international law uh, including uh international humanitarian law okay so you said did you say adhere to for adhere? adhere to yeah yeah okay so adheres to the principle abides by the principle Abide. of indivisibility of international security all states regardless of size or power have responsibility to contribute to consolidating International order based on multilateralism cooperation regulated by international law, including okay, el derecho internacional humanitario. That's one of those things where you can base, you can call that IHL. Mm -hmm. That's an acronym that is frequently used. Okay, IHL. Can I just ask the question yeah. about the poder here? Because I said power, and you said yeah. power. But is it post? I said status, maybe, or. Uh, I don't mean I don't think you want to read too much in I mean poder power for me sounds okay. sounds fine I think okay cool. do you want to do the next bit as well um in, in this sense in this sense in this sense Chile um lament not it's not laments Chile well you could it's okay well there is such yeah I in, mean well, laments mm. the fact laments yeah the laments fact. the fact if you're going to do the laments then you need to throw in 
the fact. Yeah, yeah. In, it's in in the in its tenth uh, revision conference. There hasn't been. There have not. Um, they have not succeeded uh, to achieve specific or concrete results in 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 terms of the. Uh, in, in what vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the non-proliferation treaty, which is the pillar, which is the fundamental pillar of the uh, non-proliferation regime, um, being uh, an essential element for the main maintain maintenance of the global system uh, of stable peace, um, stable, um, sustainable, and durable peace. Okay, let's let's. Let me see. Let's tell you what I would have said here. Like in this entire again, if I'm running behind, if I'm under pressure here. That I might just drop that. To be honest, I would just maybe just say, just go in straight with Chile regrets that, or here Chile regrets that. If you're not responding, if you're not, if you're fine with time, okay, in that context, whatever. But so that's one of those things, certainly in Spanish, that you could really just think about just dropping entirely, just to give you a chance, you know, for catch to catch up. Uh, Chile regrets is probably the best uh, word for lament. Uh, regrets that the tenth, uh, okay, so these conferencia de revisión review conferences are always called review conferences, and a useful act, uh, use, useful shortcut here is often called revcons. So the tenth mm -hmm. revcon, um, you have revcons, and also before you have the revcon, you have the preparatory meeting ahead of the revcon, which is often called the prepcom. Prepcoms and revcons are good, good shortcuts to know. So that the 10th RevCon did not achieve any concrete, always a bit of an ugly word for me that in English, tangible results with regards, okay, this is a very important treaty, the NPT, that's the sort of one you can just go in and call it the NPT straight away. It's obviously a non-proliferation treaty, but it's so well known that everyone should know what the NPT is, uh, which is the fundamental pillar of the non-proliferation regime. And you know what, when you're doing this in Spanish, again, I always say this is very important to break up the sentences. You can probably break this sentence up. You just say, you know, it is an essential element for maintaining uh, a global system of, okay, these adjectives, stable, saludable. I was thinking maybe robust, stable, robust, and lasting peace. Certainly you'll hear like duradero, or, or in, in, in French you'll hear durable. So the best adjective, the best collocation there I always find is lasting uh, peace. I think you said sustainable. Sustainable goes pretty well as well, but lasting is, uh, I think, the best one. And as you know, when you have a sort of string of adjectives like this, and again, if you're running behind, you can always sort of drop one or even two to help you catch up. If you say lasting piece, that's that's the good one to get. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, who's that? Is that my? Is that you, my Muna? Yes. Okay, let's give it a try then. Uh, do you do you want to try going into French, or would that make it easier? Do you want... Huh? Well, it depends on you. Okay. Go on. Let's let's see. Let's go. Let's see you go into French, and I'll see if yeah. Go on. Okay. Oh. Uh... So where where were we? Uh, no uh, cabe duda up here. You see? Okay. En effet, sans aucun doute, nous savons que sans l'existence de cet instrument, les conditions de sécurité collective auraient évolué de manière très différente. Okay. Okay. Just, just let me say here. One thing I'd say here, in effect, or just drop that. You don't need that. I don't you need that in French, or you don't need, you need it in Spanish. So, uh, for those of you who don't speak French, so basically, there's, so there's no doubt that without the existence of this instrument, uh, collective security conditions or conditions for selective collective security, again, it all depends how much space you're giving the the, the speaker, how far ahead of you is, would have evolved very differently. So, evolved. Ah, you know, you can use that in English. I think in this, you know. Sometimes it can sound a bit odd in English when things are evolving here. I think it sounds fine. Uh, uh, so go on. Keep going in French. La politique extérieure du Chili s'est engagée fortement pour cette matière. Et nous pouvons dire avec satisfaction que depuis 10 décembre 2021, le traité de non-prolifération des armes nucléaires se trouve en vigueur. Chile. Okay, so stop here. So yeah, the foreign policy of Chile uh, has a strong uh, commitment in this area. Again, I would probably split this up 
the new sentence here, put a full stop there. Uh, we can say with satisfaction that since December 2021, like I say, don't feel you need to give the full name of the uh, the treaty. So, I, I mean, I have heard in Spanish them call it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I forgot. So this is the NPT, El Tratado de Prohibición de Armas Nucleares. What did you call it, Maimuna? This is an, inter this is an interesting and important little detail here. What did you call it in French? Uh, I said it differently, but now I think I got it wrong. I said um, le traité de non, pro de non ah. prolifération des armes nucléaires. Alors, ah, you see, that's the NPT. Traité. That's the NPT. This voilà. isn't the NPT, okay? C'est le traité d'interdiction des armes exactly. nucléaires. Exactly. This is the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, otherwise known in English. It's often known as just the Ban Treaty. That's the short form of it. Now, if you don't know what the ban treaty is, this was adopted maybe two or three years ago in the General Assembly. OK, it was passed in the General Assembly. It was basically banning nukes everywhere. OK, now the trouble is that General Assembly decisions aren't binding. Only Security Council decisions are binding. And the P5, the five nuclear powers, all re basically reject it. They're, they're not in favor of it. So if they're not in favor, obviously it's it's not going to pass. But it was still kind of an important event, nevertheless, the fact that it got adopted in the General Assembly. And certainly the Latin American countries always like to sort of, you know, big it up a bit, you know, say this was a sort of big milestone. So they'll, I think Mexico, for example, were one of the main sort of sponsors of the treaty, uh, one of the main initiators. So you'll often hear the Latin American countries, uh, you know, talk about the, adopting what you can call the ban treaty. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's, it's important not to mix that up with the NPT. Uh, so the ban treaty is fully uh, valid in Chile, is in full, is in full force in Chile. Uh, okay, and do a bit more, Maimuna. Uh, uh, yes. Before, I Hello. might have two questions. Hello, Roland. Hi there, Margarita. Well. Okay, since I can't understand Spanish, I might have some ob observations regarding the French. Okay. In este materia, esta materia, uh, we, I think that we can say en la en cette matière ou en la matière, c'est pas pour la matière, mais je ne suis pas sûre en fait. Et euh, nous disons avec satisfaction, ça se dit, mais euh, j'ai cru entendre dans ce genre de texte qu'on dit nous signalons avec satisfaction et voilà. I, I think you can say either, to be honest. Yes. I mean, I think you can say both are fine the way that you said it and also the way my moon has said it i think you know no one's gonna no one's going to quibble with with either of those it's fine okay okay so, so you. go, you're welcome uh go, go on my moon do a little bit more so creemos que este tratado nous sommes convaincus que ce traité est un pilier de l'architecture internationale de désarmement de non prolifération et de sécurité nucléaire et que euh, ce traité reste la pierre angulaire que nous reconnaissons dans le TNP. Ce traité, uh -huh. est, ce traité est pleinement compatible avec ce dernier, mm -hmm. malgré quelques essais, non, euh, non, euh, quelques essais vains de dire le contraire. OK. Let me just take you through, so for those non-French speakers. Uh, so we believe that this treaty uh, is a um, is becoming, se alza como, alza como un pilar, is becoming a pillar of the international disarmament architecture. So they will often talk about the architecture. Don't feel that that's a weird word, okay, that they often they talk about that. Uh, the international architecture of disarmament, non-proliferation, and nuclear security. I would probably put a full stop here. By the way, the French, um, sorry, Spanish native speaker. Is there a Sp any Spanish native speaker here? Yes, me, Carola. Carola, would you say, so I mean, I said here for se alza como un pilar. So we think that is becoming, do you think there's, is there more to it than just is becoming? Um, I would not, it's, it, I, maybe you could say something is being highlighted as well or it's becoming definitely but stands yeah, out, also means as, it stands out stands probably out as a more, pillar. yes stands yeah, out, I like better okay 
Thank you. Uh, non proliferation Okay. It uh, okay. Robust. So here I would put a full stop, as as I say. Uh, it it, it uh, bolsters the cornerstone that that we recognise in the NPT. So that's one thing they would always say about the NPT is that it's the cornerstone of the international disarmament architecture. I would again another full stop here. Uh, it's fully compatible with it. They are fully compatible. Uh, in spite of certain, you said, yeah, I, I think you said, what did you say, essay? Would, would you not say in French, tentative? Would that not be a better? Oui, c'est bien ça, tentative. Mais le, le mot ne me venait pas, je vais yeah. chercher. Uh, yeah. Uh, tentative vaine. Oui. Yeah. To, yeah, intentos inconducentes. To, uh, to in, I was trying to think. I couldn't quite find the mot juste in English, actually. I was just it's good thinking in English, you'd probably just say, despite certain certain attempts to uh, to uh, to indicate to the contrary, certain unscrupulous attempts. Again, Carola, what would you say for inconducente? That they uh, didn't reach a goal with it or that it didn't lead to anything. Okay, it's like, okay, so like vain. So like Maimuna said, actually, for the French, okay. <laughs> So, like, attempt fruitless. with no result. Yeah, fruitless. Despite certain fruitless attempts to uh, to to indicate to the contrary. Uh, okay, and just finish the paragraph, uh, Maimuna, then. I thought it was finished. Uh, no, I think I no, uh, Chile hace un llamado. Okay. Sorry, I'm making uh, you really work hard here. Could, okay, <laughs> could you scroll down? Okay. Can you see now? Yeah. Chile hace un llamado. Le, le, le Chili appelle également à l'entrée en vigueur du traité en faveur de... No, no, I think here, here. Oh, did you do the, oh, did you do the sentence? So, Chile a un llamado. Oh, okay. Sorry, I yeah. missed. Okay. Le Chili appelle tous les pays qui ne l'ont pas déjà fait à adhérer à ce traité. Cela serait bénéfique Okay, so yeah, we say something. Chile calls on all countries that have not yet done so to. Often we talk about acceding to treaties is the the most juste when we talk about treaties generally to accede to a treaty. Um, again, you could you know you could just sign up to the if nothing else is coming to sign up to the treaty yeah, to adhere to the treaty I suppose uh, for the benefit of humanity. Uh, okay, can we have someone else volunteering then? I mean, I'd be happy to be to go again, but I don't know if there's anybody else who hasn't spoken yet. Chile for Chile, Yes, Chile issues uh, a call in order to also achieve the entry into force of the treaty for full prohibition of nuclear uh, trials. It's not the right word, but that's what uh, comes to tests. me. Tests. Tests. Test, sorry. Which is which may as well become a cornerstone together with the ban treaty and the npt within the international legal framework of disarmament and nuclear non-proliferation okay that's good let's see so i would also you know um this chile formula un llamado a lograr también la entrada that's a really long-winded way of just saying supports really chile supports the entry into force so, I mean, obviously, it's it's like, okay, if you're, you're following the speaker, okay, makes a call to also ensure the entry into force. But again, also just think if you're falling behind, you could synthesize that whole bit, formula un llamado a lograr también la, that's already just supports the entry into force of the, the treaty. Um, now, this treaty, does, can anyone tell me what it's actually called, this treaty in English? La prohibición, o sea, el tratado para la prohibición. Can anyone tell me what that is in English? It's a very important treaty as well. Like test ban, CTBT? Com comprehensive. 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 Is that, who's saying, is that Hannah? Uh, it's Hannah, yes. Hello there, Hi. Hannah. All I right. I am back. <laughs> yeah. back. That's the CTBT, okay? That's a very important one uh, to know. And again, that's one of those you can go pretty much straight in with the uh, with the acronym, okay? Uh Que está llamado a ser una, yeah, which is which should be which is designed to be a uh, fundamental element 
together with the ban treaty and the NPT in the international legal re regime on nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament. Okay. Uh, just any, so by the way, if you, frame, uh -huh. would framework in this case be in the, the framework? Word? Where did you say the framework? I said framework for regimen. Oh, re regimen. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. International framework. I said okay. I said regime and yeah, yeah. Frameworks maybe even better. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, okay. Uh, then ca carry on. Do a little bit more. Mr. President, uh, Chile shares the concern pronounced by the Director General of the agency based on the or for the nuclear installation uh, for the nuclear establishment Probably regarding nuclear, i think isn't it for yes re yeah. regarding the nuclear installations or the nuclear yeah yeah you're yeah. looking there's a better word there's a better I, installations yes. is, is a bit of a cheat i know <laughs> you're but looking for, it begins with f facility uh, yeah. facilities the nuclear facilities located in ukraine and supports the call to the parties um of the of the war or the parties in, con in con it's not in contempt right uh i think you want to say it's, you want to say the parties to the, the dispute i think is okay uh... the, or yes the parties to the dispute to not uh, to avoid carrying out military actions that might endanger physical safety and the physical security and integrity of those plans Okay, let's. Uh, so one thing I always say, obviously, is that you know when you, they go into Senor Presidente, that's always a chance for you just to drop that and just take a breath. Okay, because um, it really adds. Yeah, you don't lose anything by dropping it. You know, um, Chile shares the concern expressed by the so the Director General. You could probably call him. You know, this is all the IAE. It's all about the, the Board of Governors are there. You just call them the DG, like you call the Secretary, the UN Secretary General, the SG. You can call the, the director general, the DG um, of the agency. And again, if you know, again, if you're going fast, you could probably just omit of the agency. You could probably just say by the, the, concerns, the concerns expressed by the DG regarding the nuclear facilities uh, located in, situated in Ukraine and supports the call to the parties to the parties to the dispute or you could probably just say to the parties you might not even you, perhaps you could just do without to the dispute um to not carry out any military actions that could poner en peligro that could endanger that could jeopardize uh the physical security and integrity of these facilities of these sites perhaps a different word okay if you don't want to keep saying facilities uh, and I noticed you corrected yourself. You said safety uh, for seguridad. So it's, yeah, it's physical, yes. secu stick to security because... Um, safety is related to people and security is related exactly. to Exactly. And, and I'm trying to think, what would safety be in Spanish? Because I know in French, it's security is security is... and sûreté is safety. And in Spanish, what... it's just seguridad. No, but there'll be something, there'll be another word though for safety. Ah, uh, what would they say? Because they distinguish, they need to distinguish. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm going to have to look it up. But that's a very important distinction they make with anything to do with nuclear stuff between security and safety. Um, perhaps you could, uh, yeah. If I can't find it here, I'll, I'll, I'll put it up for the, if you're watching the, if you're watching the viewers, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. That's a very important distinction. Uh, okay. We've almost actually run out of time for the Spanish. Let's just do a little. Hannah, are you doing the Spanish? Hannah, are you doing the Spanish? Yes, I am. Uh, yes. Maybe you want to do a little bit then. Sure. Um, just okay. While what, you're are here, we at apoyamos. Hang on a sec. Yes. Okay. Give me a sec just to clear clear all the drawings. So we're here, right? Apoyamos las iniciativas. Okay, okay, so go go quickly, go fast, Hannah. Imagine okay. you're in the exam. So. Right, okay. Um, we support the DG's um, initiatives in this regard, particularly the creation of a nuclear and technological... Um, oh, now, well, again, imagine, though, that, you know... Okay, oh, you're probably not going to have the time to let it go all the way to the end and then cut back and call it like that, if you see what I mean. Okay, okay. Especially the creation of a 
protection zone from nuclear and technological security um, around the nuclear facility at Zaporizhia. Zaporozhia, that's it, Zaporizhia. The, the pronunciation, Zaporozhia. Thank uh -huh. you. <laughs> um, so that its physical integrity is not affected. We also call for the respect of the seven pillars defined by the body so as to guarantee um, nuclear technology, safety and physical safety of all nuclear facilities in this country. Okay, so what I would say here is we support the initiatives of the DG here. And it's this in Tira, again, if I was going fast, it's here, in yeah. particular to create... Now, one thing I'd, I'd, I'd say, in, in English, when you hear the names of these long... You come across something like that you've never heard of before like this, like a zona de protección de seguridad nuclear física and tecnología. I know that there's a temptation, I have a temptation to just wait and try and mm -hmm. say it as I, you would in English. You know, you'd, in English, you'd probably say a nuclear, physical and technological security protection zone, because that sounds so nice in English. Yeah. The trouble with doing that, though, is, OK, you're waiting, you're waiting for the right moment to start. And then by the time you get to technological, you suddenly forget what the original bit, the zona de protección. So really, I think generally you're better off cutting your losses when you enter, when you get into these sort of mechanisms or initiatives. You don't know where they're going to go, and it's just 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 do them as you're going along. So I would probably say like you did, like a okay, a protection zone for nuclear physical security and technological maybe i'd maybe i'd or dive in here when i heard the physic i'd probably say nuclear physical security and then i hear oh technological and i say and technological security i just think over the overall you're just better more or less following it rather than waiting and then trying to give it all in this beautiful sounding english yeah. sort of name that's just what i would say there yeah. uh, around the nuclear i think we call them plants as, uh -huh. as well don't we nuclear plant and in Zap, I mean, that's what they say in The Simpsons, right? It's a nuclear plant, right? That's where Homer works, so. right? <laughs> At the nuclear plant in Zaporozhye, so that its physical integrity is not affected, and to respect the seven pillars defined by. So look up the seven pillars. I'd advise you, by the way, to look up the seven pillars. Uh, this is to do with the agreement over the management of the Zaporozhye power station. So the IAE drew up these seven priorities. I think they called them specifically pillars. Um, uh, where's my phone? I did have my page open. Bear with me one moment. I'm going to find my phone. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm still coming through, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, just so, so just here, stop shelling immediately, maintain safety systems, staff conditions, secure off-site power, effective supply chains, emergency response, reliable communications. Yeah, these are the seven IAE recommendations for nuclear safety in Ukraine. So they're well worth knowing if you run into one of these things. And by the way, uh, Hannah, organismo. So as I said you weren't here at the beginning. So the, for some reason, the Spanish call the agency an organismo. Very annoying. But if you see it, organismo, it's the agency, actually, they're talking about. It, uh, Maimuna, are you still there? Someone in the French, what do they call it in, in the French? Do they call it the agence? Exactly. They call it agence. Agence, yeah? Yes, it is agence. The agence. Yeah. Uh, okay, to guarantee. And then, okay, so this seguridad. It's just nuclear security, okay? As I say, I'm sure there's a different, another word in Spanish that Carola is going to find. Are you there, Carola? Someone's going to find out what safety is in in Spanish, and physical security uh, of all nuclear facilities in the country. Okay, so we're going to yeah, that's pretty much the end of. The, we're going to have to move on to the the Can French. Can I ask a now. question? Yes, sorry, uh, sorry to that? interrupt. That's uh, Ekaterina. Hello, Ekaterina. Hello, sorry. Um, it's three questions actually. Well, first is the name of the power plants. Yep. Uh, do we call it Zaporozhye as in Russian or Zaporizhye as in Ukrainian? I would just be calling it. To, I, I didn't. I hadn't thought of. I had. I must admit, I'd not even thought of that. Well, it actually is written here, Zaporizhye. <laughs> Zapori, it is, yeah. So you, what's the you know accepted what I, way of saying it? I don't think anyone's going to... I don't think anyone would pull you up for that. Except the Ukrainian delegation, perhaps. They might pull you up for Kiev. You were to say Kiev and Kiev. Okay, I know that's... I think once you're getting down to Zaporozhye, it's already hard enough to pronounce for a non-Russian speaker as it is. Um, okay. I take your point. I take your point. Um I mean, I've just been saying it's Zaporozh, you know, I've always known it as Zaporozhye, that place. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's, it's maybe, just to yeah, be careful. maybe it's easier. I, I suppose if it's the first time you're, uh, uh, 
it coming, you know, doing stuff to do with Zaporizhia and the name is now fr is new to you, maybe you're better off saying Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia. Yeah. I'd not even, I didn't even notice. I hadn't even noticed that. Uh, my second question, very simple, is can you actually say MPP instead of the power plant? I think you can. I've noticed they use that. Yeah. I, I've oh, noticed uh, the Do end, people I, actually I, say that? I mean, I've, I've noticed, that. I, I have noticed that that being referred to in like documents and I've, I've had. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the first time. You probably want to call it the. Uh, maybe you could not. Maybe not the first time. You probably want to call it the nuclear plant. You know, the right, first so time then... round. And after that, you could maybe call it the NPP. But you, they they do call it that. Have you seen that written? Yeah, it's in the well, the documents have it all over. They the call, call it yeah. So I think if it's in the documents, then yes, yeah. But as I said, uh, the first time. And I'd my final question is. It actually concerns the zona de protección de seguridad yes. de nuclear física. As far as I understand, in English, it is actually called physical protection rather than physical security. Is that, uh, well, they've got protection as well. I mean, they've got protection de seguridad. Well, actually, well, the thing, that's, that's the point. So would we just go, you know, word for word and if do you didn't, if, if you didn't know it, if it was the first security. time that you were coming, you wouldn't, I mean, if you knew it, if you knew it, then yes. If you didn't know it before, though, I guess you'd, en you'd inevitably end up saying um, protection. But so you, it's interesting to know, though. So you think it's called what, what do you think it's called? Well, the, the thing is that whatever we call well, when it's in, we're ensuring the protection of a, of a nuclear object, well, like a uh -huh, nuclear facility, uh -huh. for example, with all those doors and windows and uh, it's, so it's the security, not safety, not from within, but from without. And mm -hmm. that's actually what's called physical protection. At least in the US. I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, 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 I'm just looking up here. They've got the Zaporozhye Protection Zone. Yeah, that's what that's. I'm trying to find mm. the actual way they say this particular zone. Yeah. Uh, do they say protection for the protection or protection security? Seeing, uh, but I didn't find anything in English. Yeah, I see what you mean. Hang on. An, IA just a proposal to, an IAEA proposal, this is from the I to establish a nuclear safety and security protection zone around Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. This is on an just, IAE pa page. Yeah, yeah, so just from nuclear safety and security protection. From September. So, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll have a look around once I publish the video. Hopefully I'll find something more definitive. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, anything else before we move on to France? Yes, Elena. Well, you were asking about security and safety in, in Spanish. Surely, one of the ways will be well, would be saying uh, seguridad eh, protección, eh, protección. Maybe it's protección. Maybe, 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 maybe. Following from what we've just been discussing, mm, could be, could be. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe seguridad física. Maybe, maybe is that as opposed to yeah. I, I I have come across it before. Whenever you have an you know, st uh, they have in you know biological weapons, the BWC that they were talking about. I just I just can't remember off the top of my head what the, what the actual specific wording was in in Spanish for that for for safety. Uh, okay, so you are probably asking yourselves, waiting with bated breath, what are these earth shattering conclusions that I reached regarding the uh, the question of nuclear security and safety that we were discussing uh, in the, the workshop. Well, as I said, I did a bit of looking around the IAE site this morning, and um, I found this. I'm going to share the screen with you. So I basically Googled IAEA nuclear safety and security. And it takes you to this page here. Okay. I promotes a strong, sustainable global nuclear safety and security framework in member states working to protect people, society, and the environment from the harmful effects of ionizing radiation. Now, the interesting thing is, as I say, you have this page in all six of the UN languages. And if you go to Espanol, what does it give you? This is, this is interesting. Look, Seguridad Nuclear Tecnológica y Física. So this leads me to the conclusion that you read here. El OEA promueve un marco mundial de seguridad nuclear, tecnológica y física sólido y sostenible entre sus estados miembros y trabaja para proteger a las personas, la sociedad y el medio ambiente de los efectos nocivos de la radiación ionizante. Sorry, I had to practice my Spanish reading a little bit there. And so from this, it would appear that seguridad nuclear tecnológica refers to safety and física 
refers to security. So look, nuclear safety and security in Spanish, seguridad nuclear, tecnológica y física. So I think that that might be a good um, that might be a good reference point to 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 stick to. Okay, that that might partially resolve our dis the discussion that we had. Now the other thing you, I was talking saying to Elsa that there was this thing that I couldn't remember a word that I'd seen. I was talking about the BWC, okay, the Biological Weapons Convention, which I'd done in November and December, and I knew there was something they'd used it in, in that meeting for nuclear safety. They, they talked about bioseguridad, and I looked it up, and it was biocustodia for safety. So in, in English, it was going biosecurity. They were talking about biosecurity and biosafety. So the Spanish equivalent was bioseguridad for biosecurity, and biocustodia for biosafety. So that's maybe just worth making a mental note of, of, of that as well, because obviously that, 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 this was just back in November, so this is obviously um, very, this language is obviously very current, shall we say. So uh, I hope that's shed a bit of light on that question. Okay, now let's turn to the rest of the Chilean statement and uh, let me take you through it. Okay, so here we go. This is so we got up to here. So starting page three. So uh, strap your seatbelts, and I'm going to be going through this quite fast. Okay, so our country is troubled by the grave, severe, if you want, for I tend to often see the grave effects, serious, severe humanitarian effects uh, that could be provo provoked, that could be caused uh, by damage to facilities and that could lead to la liberación de material radioactivo. So for liberación, I'd say the, the release. We talk about the release of dangerous substances, in this case, radioactive material, uh, with its uh, negative implications. No se puede garantizar. So this is like a new sentence, really, isn't it? I would probably break that sentence up there and then start the new sentence by saying, there can be no guarantee that an error wouldn't set off a catastrophe, a disaster of proportions uh, that would have irreversible uh, impact, an irreversible impact on life, uh, human health, and the environment, uh, not just in Ukraine, but also throughout the region and at a global level. President, uh, Chile states it's a profound concern at the conclusions set out highlighted in the latest uh, report of the DG, in that the agency, so remember, el organismo, why do the Spanish have to call the, the IAEA an organismo? Why? why? That the agency is not able to confirm that the Iranian nuclear program is exclusively peaceful. Uh, therefore, Chile... Again, this is perhaps something you could drop if you are running behind. Chile urges the agency and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Let's give them the full name, full constitutional name, first time around. That's how that tends to be my rule of thumb. Okay, then call them Iran afterwards. Uh, urges the the agency and the Islamic Republic of Iran to enhance dialogue. I always tend to enhance when I never say profundizar el dialogue. I tend to go with enhance dialogue uh, to move towards. Um, compliance when it comes to uh, verification and monitoring in this country uh, in the light of Resolution 2231 of the Security Council, okay, we don't need to say that of the UN, and to continue working jointly towards a comprehensive solution to this matter. So I looked this, okay, vigilancia, uh, this came up at quite recently in another episode. I think I said um, sometimes it's oversight, vigilancia. However, in this case, so I looked, it's worth looking at the resolution, okay? Resolution 2231. So that is the resolution that, that basically gave the green light for the JCPOA, the Joint uh, Comprehensive Plan of Action that was reached with Iran. And in it, it refers very much to verification and uh, monitoring of the country's nuclear sites. So, um, yeah. So we call... So we call on the agency and on Iran uh, to continue the dialogue and cooperation in La Senda. I mean, you can probably just cut that out. 
so as to superar situaciones, so as to overcome situations, surmount situations that could pudieran poner en peligro that could jeopardize international peace and security um okay so president we value the role played by the Ibero Ibero American Forum of radiological and nuclear nuclear regulator bodies so i've never heard of this before foro uh in the field of uh nuclear uh, security, nuclear, radiological, and physical security in a lot in those bases, Kilo Integran in its in its member states. I would probably put a full stop here. Its priority is bolstering cooperation with the agency. All these organismos, you don't know when to call them a body. So I think here that's talking about in this case the organismo is the is the agency. Um, special, uh, we want to extend special thanks or special greetings to this uh, association of radiological and nuclear regulators, which uh, in July uh, will be marking 25 years promoting the security in all practices that use radioactive materials in the Ibero American region. In that context, we recognize the Collaborative work of the agency with the specialized national bodies, such as the Chilean Commission for Nuclear Energy, which assumed the commitment to host in 2023 in Santiago the meeting of the organ on technical coordination of the regional agreement for cooperation for the promotion of science and nuclear technology in the Latin uh, in Latin America and Caribbean. Whoa, that is a long name for a uh, for an institution. Arcal, handily enough. This is takes me back maybe to what I was saying uh, earlier on. I think I was telling Elsa that when you suddenly run into one of these mechanisms or one of these agencies, often it'll be a regional agency. There's sometimes a temptation to to wait and give it a nice sounding English equivalent name, but then. So, but then that that name can often drag out too long, and then you finally fi and then you find at the end that you've forgotten what the the first few words are, which are often the uh, the most important actually. Um, so which which is why I say just sort of break it up as you go along. Don't try and to sound, you know. You don't have to get it a hundred percent right, so long as you get across the um, the gist of what the body does. You're okay. So this. Would, I would call this the meeting of the organ on technical coordination of the regional agreement of cooperation for the promotion of science and nuclear technology in Latin America and the Caribbean. Chile firmly believes, let's, I think I did a breath after that, to be honest, so we'll get rid of presi, presi, Senor Presidente. Chile firmly believes that the future of science, technology and nuclear applications is in its use uh, for strictly peaceful purposes, con fines pacificos, for Peaceful purposes, for peaceful ends, I guess you could say. Uh, again, in este sentido, maybe you say here, uh, we value, uh, we appreciate the emblematic projects. So maybe you want to say for emblematicos, the flagship projects uh, of the agency, uh, such as the New Tech Plastics Initiative, uh, focused on the, uh, managing uh, plastic pollution, contamin contamination por plásticos, plastic pollution, uh, through nuclear technology in the marine environment, uh, which is a great benefit in efforts carried out by countries, in particular Chile, in this sphere as an ocean country. Coupled with this, I always assume, that's just something I tend to say whenever I uh, say suma, uh, coupled, coupled with this, Although you could almost say allied to this, allied when something's when you allied when something's allied to something else, it tends to be in a, a very positive uh, connotation. Uh, so maybe you could say and allied to this, there's the I think por cierto you can probably drop the partic participation of the uh, well the National Agricultural Sanitary Agency. Uh, in the Zodiac program, 
which helps bolster the national capacities for detection of zoonotic illnesses. So zoonotic illnesses, these are illnesses or diseases that affect uh, animals. Okay, And I've noticed in the last few years, um, this has become increasingly prominent since COVID, since, what, since the, the war in Ukraine, it's you know, it's being mentioned ever more, ever more frequently. And it's interesting. So the, the main organization responsible for that field, it's, it's, it's called the World Organization for Animal Health. Now, they used to be called, they were the OIE. That was a French acronym, and they were referred to as the OIE. They very recently changed the name of the organization. Now, now, now it's called the World, maybe it's because it's not, maybe because it's now becoming a more prominent actor and for it to be more recognizable on the international scene. It's now the World Organization for Animal Health, and I have heard it referred to as WOA. But, um, yeah, so be aware of that, okay? Zoonotic Illnesses, World Organization for Animal Health. Chile values the initiative Rays of Hope. Um, I don't know what this is, but I noticed I had looked at a few of the Latin American uh, statements uh, at this general conference, and then quite a few of them mention this initiative, Rays of Hope, um, under the auspices of the Scientific Forum this year, uh, which in its initial stages included the countries of Africa, and which we hope will soon uh, benefit uh, to a greater extent, the countries of Latin America and Chile in particular. Uh, we believe in the relevance of this initiative in order to improve capacities for on uh, oncological care, uh, which will have a direct benefit to the inhabitants of our countries uh, as a result of the collaborative work uh, between oncological centers all around the world. It's obviously fighting cancer, right? Oncological treatment. President, the contribution of women is crucial or is fundamental in the sphere of science, technology, and nuclear applications, as well as in activities uh, related to the mission, to the tasks of the, I, the IAEA. Or I guess you could just say associated to the work of the IAEA. The agency should guarantee their participation at the highest level and uh, bolster the uh, production and dissemination. So diffusion, okay, it's important to have that as you go to what I think dissemination of updated statistics or up-to-date statistics in this field and has an important role in ensuring equality on discussion panels and in support to uh, CSO, civil society organizations, uh, which bring together uh, scientists in the nuclear sphere. We highlight El Programa de Becas. So at the UN, you get a lot of things, these Programa de Becas, and they are usually called fellowship programs, okay? Los Becarios, fellows. And I've got to admit, it's a word that I perhaps wouldn't... Uh, Fellows, okay, I mean, in English we use it in slang, you know, there's those fellows over there. But to be honest, I don't I think I'd have really known what the word meant maybe until my 20s, that it's like scholars, okay? That's a word that's maybe what, what, that we're maybe more familiar with. But um, yeah, fellows, for this is certainly called the Marie Curie uh, Fellowship Program um, that the, the IAEA runs. So be aware of that word, okay, both in English and becas, becarios in Spanish. Uh, so we would highlight the Marie Curie Fellowship Program of the IAEA uh, in supporting the training of women in nuclear science, as well as the fact that a Chilean woman was selected or was chosen in December uh, in the context of the program to uh, read postgraduate studies, the so, Cursare Studios. That's uh, I guess it's quite a high, is it quite a high registered way of saying that in Spanish. So I mean, I was in English. You know, we do sometimes. You know, we say you know, I, I read, I read great at Oxford um, to read. That's it's quite high register in English, right? Rather than just the usual, I, I studied, I studied, I studied Russian at university. I read. So people that go to Oxford and Cambridge tend to read things. People who don't go to Oxford and Cambridge just tend to study. So I, I don't know if there's any, any, anything similar uh, in Spanish. But anyway, um, 
re to read postgraduate studies. Uh, we hope that uh, others will have the same opportunity in the newest edition of this relevant program. We sometimes talk about the, the, the latest uh, iteration of this program, okay, as a, as a synonym. Edition is something that we talk about more with magazines, I guess, more in print, but with an event. I think we often, we often say the iteration. Uh, furthermore, we believe that it's vital for the agency to maintain clear and uh, defined proto protocols that protect the work of verificador, uh, verificadores in terrenas. I guess they're talking about the inspectors, the work of inspectors on the ground. I don't think verifiers, that doesn't sound very good in English. Uh, these protocols should be uh, known uh, in advance by the member states and updated on a permanent basis or permanently updated, providing due guarantees so that inspectors... Okay, so here, I guess, Chile is making uh, the point that they're both male and female, so... If I was in a hurry, I would just say the inspectors, if you really wanted to get the point over that they were men and women, so that inspectors, both male and female, from the agency can carry out their work safely. Um, here, okay, I know we're talking about the IA, IAEA. I think here, garantias is just guarantees, so the, because we're talking about guarantees for you know the, the security of actual individuals, of people. So I think here they're just talking about guarantees, whether when it's to do with the actual nuclear weapons themselves, then we're talking about the safeguards. President, I'd like to point out that between 2021 and 2022, Chile received or hosted an inspection from the agency and has uh, maintained its supply of information in keeping with its obligations and commitments, uh, ensuring the absence of any diversion, this is an important word, of nuclear material for non-peaceful uses or n undeclared activities. Okay, so I think this is wording, that, there's quite a bit of this wording perhaps in the IAE's statute. So yeah, there, there is, that's, the, that's what is basically the IAEA's uh, Bible, if you like, there's the statute of the IAEA and you can go and read it here, you see, it's not too long. I think there's a lot of amendments to it, but um, how many articles? 22, uh, 20, 23 articles, and I think that wording is taken, This, the issue of deviation, uh, diversion, diversion, I do beg your pardon, diversion of nuclear material to non-peaceful uses and undeclared activities. So make sure you, for this view, diversion. And here Chile is applying all uh, instruments and activities of a, of a national character to ensure the exclusively peaceful use of nuclear energy. Conforme a lo suscrito en el proto protocolo adicional, so I guess you could just say in line with the additional protocol, I think you could skip lo suscrito, uh, Chile uh, regularly sends to the agencies uh, the uh, required declarations in this document. Uh, information on so the information on auditing and oversight of nuclear materials has also been sent uh, in a timely fashion in line with the safeguards agreement and the provisions of the subsidiary arrangements so I did have a look I contabilidad went here for auditing that I mean, um, I did look, try and have a quick look through the through the statute. I couldn't find the exact reference to what that might be, but you know, whenever you hear it in any context, contabilidad, it's usually going to be something like you know, uh, auditing, control. I like tend to go with oversight of nuclear materials, safeguards agreement. That's a very important um, part of the whole um, package at the IAEA. What goes on there, and. Lo establecido, so it's referring to the provisions in the subsidiary arrangements. So I looked this up actually, so it is yeah, the los arreglos subsidiarios, that is the subsidiary arrangements. Finally, for Chile, the technical cooperation program of the agency is crucial when it comes to capacity building, 
capacitación, training and bolst fortalecimiento, strengthening, bolstering, enhancing national infrastructure for radiological security, as well as in terms of human health, with an emphasis on cancer and other high impact pathologies in health and quality of life, as well as in, so there's a long sentence, as well as in the areas of hydro resources, marine and coastal environments, and food security, among others. Um, all these, all of which have ongoing projects, uh, all of which have ongoing technical cooperation pro projects underway uh, between Chile and the agency. So again, maybe you want to try and split that sentence up somehow. Maybe we'd say, finally, for Chile, the technical cooperation program, which I think is called the TCP of the agency, is crucial in areas such as capacity building, training, uh, bolstering national infrastructure for radiological security, also in the field of uh, human health, the emphasis on cancer, other high-impact pathologies on health and life quality, as well as in areas of hydro resources, marine coastal environments, food security, among others. Uh, in all these areas, there are technical cooperation projects underway between Chile and the, and the, the agency, the body, not the body, the agency. So there you have it. Okay, so there's some really good material there for you to get your teeth into there in the Chilean statement. So I hope you've uh, I hope you learnt a few. I hope you've got a few. I've given you a few new ideas, both myself and those uh, those brave souls who joined me at the Sunday at six workshop. As I say, if you've liked what you've seen, please do click the like button, subscribe, and I will be putting out the uh, the Swiss. Uh, for you for, uh, French speakers, I'll be putting out the Swiss segment in the next few days, as well as the uh, the Russian. So stay tuned, stay tuned to the interpretation station, and come on, help push me up to. I'm trying to get up to 2,000 uh, subscribers. That's my next big um, target. I'm on about 1,810 at the moment. So come on, help me get up to 2,000. Uh, anyway, with that, all that remains to be said now is that. Uh, this first episode of the Interpretation Station 2023, the 157th episode of the Interpretation Station in total, stands adjourned. <laughs>